In this video, we'll see how to create concept diagrams in just under 10 minutes. Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you've been thinking that making concept diagrams is difficult or time consuming, I'm here to tell you otherwise. Today, we'll be using SketchUp and Photoshop to create concept diagrams in just under 10 minutes. I'm Salman, an architect and illustrator. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon for notification. So let's get started. Let's begin with creating our block models in SketchUp. So these block models doesn't have to be to exact scale, but make sure you follow the right proportions of the design you intend to make. I like to keep each element in separate groups so that it's easier to edit as you keep showing the evolution of the form at each level. The first layer is just the side and a basic rectangular volume. Once done, just copy it on the vertical blue axis and place it on top of it. On the second level, we are just showing how the basic volume is cut horizontally on both the faces. Once that is done, we'll have to copy the second one and move it vertically to create the third axis. I'm using a rough measurement of 4 meters so that all the layers have a uniform distance between them. On the third level, we are showing an addition of another volume, possibly the core of the building and then let's again move it above 4 meters to create the fourth layer. I've added a rectangular cutout on the fourth layer that kind of shows a window opening. This is a really conceptual representation, but you can work it around with different shapes and volumes as per your design. For this example, let's just go with four layers. The next step is to place them in proper isometric view. For that, let's go to camera and turn on parallel projection. You can zoom in and make small adjustments with the angle to fit it in the best view. It's better to zoom in to fit the exact vertical height so that we retain a good resolution when we export this as an image. Now let's go to view, animation and add scene. We now have to change the styles of this model. For that we need to go into styles and choose hidden layers. We also need to make small adjustments with this view. So let's go to edit and turn on profiles. Let's increase the profiles to 3 so that it's visible when we export the image. Let's update the scene and export the image from File, Export, 2D Graphic. Before we export, let's choose Options and choose the higher resolution of image so that we get a good quality. Click Export and save it in your local drive. We've just created an A3 canvas and let's drag and drop the image into the canvas. We can then crop the canvas to make it vertical. The first step here is to add outlines to all the volume and we can do that by using the pen tool and the shortcut is P. On the drop down menu on top, Choose shape and the fill as no fill and the stroke as black stroke. The width of the stroke varies with resolution of the image so you just need to trial and error to figure out the one that works best for you. We can always adjust the stroke later as well so don't worry if your lines are too thick or too thin. Let's just start clicking each edge to create the outline with the pen tool and these doesn't have to be 100% accurate. You can always make corrections with the lines that you've made using the same pen tool or the direct selection tool on the toolbar on the left. Similarly, let's do the same for all the building volumes on all four levels. We're just trying to highlight the building shape with the pen tool here. Once you're done with all four shapes, we can then move on to highlight the site. Let's select the site from the base image and use the solid color tool to add a colors to it. Let's choose a light shade of grey for the site and choose the edges of the site once again from the base image and this time let's add a darker shade of grey. Now we'll use the same pen tool to highlight the site but this time we can alter the stroke of the pen as dashed lines. The distance of these dashed lines can be adjusted as well, so let's follow the same method to add dashed lines on all four diagrams. Let's choose the background on the base image and create another solid color layer. This can be a light grey or a lighter shade of beige. We have created the massing diagrams and the next step is to add vegetation and trees. There are multiple ways to add trees. You can either do them by just copy pasting images from Pinterest as PNGs or creating them as brushes to draw over the diagrams. I have just downloaded this illustrated tree figures and opened it in Photoshop. You can make them as a brush by just selecting the tree and going to edit, define brush present. Just press OK and this tree will be defined as a brush. 
we can just select a color and draw over the diagrams. Similarly, let's define another tree as well and go back to the file, choose a light shade of green and draw over the diagrams. Since this is an evolution diagram, we just need to draw trees on one level and copy paste them throughout. So that makes the job easier for us. Let's add a green roof on the fourth layer by selecting the roof with the polygonal tool and just use a basic brush with green color and draw some strokes over it. Now it's up to your own individual design requirement and your creativity to add life into these diagrams. Let's just copy an arrow from Pinterest and place it on the file. This arrow can be used to represent the evolution of the volume. Let's place it and use the distort tool to change the angle. Let's also change the color of the arrows. And on a new layer with a brush tool, I'm just going to draw over it to create the sun path. If you want to further enhance your diagrams, you can go back to the SketchUp file and turn on shadows. Once the shadows are there, we need to turn off the edges, profiles and the dashes. So that will leave us with just the shadows. Let's export this as an image and place it over the SketchUp file. Let's resize the shadow layer to place it exactly over the diagrams. Change the blending mode to multiply and the shadow layer will pass through on the base diagrams. I'm going to follow the same technique to add human figures into this diagram. So let's define them as a brush and draw over the figures. The concept diagram is almost complete at this point if you're looking to create a simple presentation. And you can add different elements and play around with different color palettes and textures to create something more unique. For example, you can just download a paper texture from Pinterest or Google and place it over the diagrams to create a nice effect. Also, you can browse Pinterest and find multiple color palettes for architectural inspirations and use them in your diagrams. The way to do that is pretty simple if you follow the same steps that we did in this video. Since most of the layers that we have are in solid colors, you can just choose the layer and use the eyedropper tool to pick the color from the palette. Using this technique, we have created a system of fully customizable layers. So adjusting the colors and textures in this file must be really easy. Here are some examples of the same diagram that we have tried with multiple color palettes. So that was it from this video. I hope you found this to be helpful. And if you did, please hit that like button and share this with your friends. You can follow me on Instagram and the handle is right here. See you on the next one.